How Downforce is created still has peculiar myths surrounding it. At the most basic level, a wing can be reduced down to a two-dimensional profile. Here is a presentation on how profiles create lift and what profile would suit the high lift requirements for motorsport. Current forms of motorsport are highly influenced by aerodynamic forces. Contemporary formal methods developed in regards to the mechanisms of flight, the airfoil or aerofoil can be traced back to the beginnings of human flight. The kucha jukowski method for describing lift introduced the idea of circulation, where the more current methods use the Navier-Stokes equation using pressure and momentum. With ever-increasing computational resources, the use of circulation has been replaced by pressure analysis for aerofoil lift. However, this early theory can provide some complementary thinking in this domain. Wing theory is a long and complicated story full of mathematics with the most important theories developed by Lighthill, Kuta, Joukowsky and Prandtl, among many, many others. But these four gave the foundations of wing theory in 2D and then 3D. It is far too long for just one video, so this introduction will seem brief to those who know the story. Thus I recommend further reading, which really should be done with any internet video. The fundamentals will be explained, but not derived, and their application is to give a sense of meaning to this discipline, such that the use of CFD will be used to help characterise the theory. First is the fundamental theory of lift. The kuta jukowski method conformally maps a wing profile to a circle with two stagnation points forward and aft. As you can imagine, a non-rotating circle does not produce lift, and thus there is no circulation as a result. Derived from the addition of flow elements, lift is created on the circle if there is circulation or vorticity added to the circle, in this case producing lift. The resultant is called potential flow. And for anyone that wants to know what this exactly means, there is a website, potentialflow.com, where you can add flow elements to your heart's content. This forms the kuta jukowski theorem. Here, the lift force equals rho times velocity times gamma. Therefore, having zero circulation means no lift. Circulation is a description of how the air, as an ideal fluid, in viscid flow if you may, has been changed around the wing's profile. With no boundary layer, the surface velocity is non-zero and is taken and mapped onto a circle usually represented like this. The air isn't literally circulating around the profile, but is in a type of superposition, meaning that the summation of the fluid moving around the profile is what generates the rotation of the air after it leaves the trailing edge. Calculating the circulation is formally described as the interval along the wing profile. From thin foil theory, a sheet of vortices from the flow elements are taken along a line, giving a reasonable approximation of lift. By convention, a wing profile is defined by its camber line and thickness. Applying thin foil theory calculating the circulation along this camber length gives a close approximation of lift. Adding a thickness equation to the camber line gives the profile seen here with the NACA 8415-8315, FS63-137, and S1223. This thickness also makes the thin foil calculations less accurate. Each of these profiles are clearly different and represent a different design philosophy or method. The NACA four digit series aren't really designed outside the method that gives the thickness equation that results in the wing profile. The Walkman FX63137 and the Seelig S1223 uses equations and methods that are intended to give specific characteristics to the wing, in this case high lift. That is, the thickness gives the lift coefficients and efficiency ratios that are far superior to the NACA profiles. Now if you look at the plot of pressure coefficients along the profile, there is more lift created earlier. These are, of course, not the only high lift profiles. Digging into the incomplete list of airfoils on airfoiltools.com, you can get an idea of the range. Even though the S1223 profile is relatively contemporary compared even to the Wartman designed FX63137, it has particular characteristics important for high lift airfoils that was pioneered by Robert Liebeck, that is the Stratford pressure recovery distribution. Constructing a wing profile using the kuta jukowski method implies invisit flow, with no turbulent boundary layer, which means the separation due to adverse gradients isn't well represented. 
if at all. This doesn't even say anything about drag, which isn't present without said boundary layer. The Stratford pressure recovery distribution is an acknowledgement that there is a minimum distance to the trailing edge that the low pressure minimum can be. Robert Liebeck in his 1969 paper, Optimization of Airfoils for Maximum Lift, built upon the established understanding how boundary layers control the maximum lift that an airfoil can achieve. The principle is to avoid separation, which would reduce the maximum lift. Airflow over the wing needs to equalise at the trailing edge. If it doesn't, high pressure from above the wing will leak back under the trailing edge. This creates drag for one, but it also means the effective geometry of the wing is reduced. Changing the effective geometry, and therefore the lift characteristics, is particularly bad for planes. For cars, it's just not ideal. These diagrams from the Liebeck paper illustrate how the profile can be divided up into regions of pressure gradients. Here is an idealized plot with maximized pressure regions. This conceptualization of pressure distribution is probably the best I have seen. With downforce seemingly a still strangely misunderstood subject, this is the best illustration of how low pressure is caused by the air accelerating off the leading edge over the curved profile and dissipating back to atmospheric. The profile that this method describes are clearly not very similar to the high lift NACA 8415 seen here. A more refined profile from those of the Liebeck paper, the LNV109 looks a lot more like the S1223 which produces more lift than the other three profiles tested. Therefore for a single element wing, choosing a high lift profile matters. The pressure distribution of these profiles tend to exhibit the Stratford pressure recovery distribution. The S1223 has such a region, but also a correspondingly large amount of high pressure region. Of course, these are without the additional measures that tend to have a positive effect on lift, like gurney flaps or even more elements, which are all common features of motorsport wings.